Hey everybody, Matt Cutler from Block Native here. Uh, excited to share with you all the updates that we've made to our EtherNow observability platform as part of the recent Dankun hard fork. Uh, here we have EtherNow.xyz. We're trying to answer this question of what's happening on Ethereum right now. Um, to us, that means two things. It's the last block in the current contents of the mempool. So at the top, we have time to next block and some uh, top level statistics about what happened in the last block. And then we have these real real-time metrics down here that say what's going on in the public mempool. So for instance, what's the USD value of ETH transfers versus stablecoin transfers versus DeFi swap value of contents of the current mempool? And again, if you have questions about uh, what these contain, you can just hover over the uh, information icon and it'll give you details there. Um, down here, we have marketable transactions, uh, base fee, private transactions, and we've added uh, a highlight that you'll see from time to time um, where things will turn red. So for instance, if block space utilization is greater than 50%, that means the base fee will be increasing. And this uh, down here will uh, turn red to indicate that. And then of course, as part of Dankun, the big headline feature is uh, EIP 4844 for blobs. And so we have detail here for the number of marketable blobs currently pending, the current blob base fee, and any private blobs that we detect. And uh, we have this notion of blob contention, which is in each block, there's only room for six blobs. So if there's more than six blocks, uh, blobs uh, um, in the mempool, then there'll be contention for the available uh, 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 blob spots in the coming block. Now, this interface, EtherNow homepage, is really designed for a whole ecosystem and for decision makers to sort of see what's going on. But underneath it is a powerful transaction explorer, which is aimed at developers and, and researchers to sort of figure out what's going on behind the scenes so we can actually get in and see what's going on and, and have some observability in the public mempool. Now, you can get to that right here by clicking on Transaction Explorer, or you can get to that by clicking on any one of uh, these uh, tiles here, and you'll get what, what's known as a filtered view. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to click the Marketable Blobs tile, and we'll see how many blobs are currently pending in the mempool. It's currently zero, but if we go over here to filters, we see our new filter interface, which is much more capable, much easier to understand as well. And we can see that what we've done is selected the type three uh, filter here, that toggle is set on. So basically we're gonna be ignoring all sorts of transactions besides type three. And those will show up here in the public mempool, if any are there, and then back through historic uh, blocks. So here is one in block number 2888. It's a ZK sync validator time lock uh, uh, transaction with the blob. Here is an optimism batch. Now, what we're doing for optimism and base as well is we're actually decoding the rollup in real time. So I'm just gonna click this away. Here we have this uh, transaction. We can see the blob that we're, uh, affiliated with it, there was six of them, and we can see the details on the blobs, but we're actually decoding the rollup itself. So significantly, this single transaction, this single batch, um, included 236 optimism uh, blocks for a total of 2,674 optimism transactions. And here we get each one of these blocks. And if we click on block 13, uh, we can see inside the batch, like exactly what was happening um, on that transaction on Optimism. So really powerful for those L2s that we decode, and uh, we're looking uh, to decode more moving forward. Um, that filter capability though is quite powerful, and you can basically filter on private transactions only, addresses, four byte signatures, status, etc. And then if you log in and you can log into EtherNow using an email address or a wallet, you can actually have uh, saved filters as well. So here are my saved filters. Uh, I created one recently for sample bridge contracts, which will show a, a variety of those. And, and these are shareable. So if I click here and I copy that and open up a new tab, I can share this with my team. And then I'll go right into Transaction Explorer with these filters applied, okay? So we're filtering on a series of addresses associated with uh, bridge contracts. So we can see um, those over here as well. Now, let's say I wanted to update this. I happen to have the wormhole smart contract available here. I can just go in, add a condition, add that address, 
hit apply and then save, and now that will be part of my filter as well. So really powerful capability for developers and researchers and, and sophisticated users to start to see what's going on inside the public mempool to get a better understanding of what's driving volume, what's driving price, etc. Now the, the final piece of all of this sort of underneath this real-time interface is we have our mempool data archive. This is historical record of all this ephemeral data that is passing through, uh, great for researchers, uh, great for forensics analysis. So if you're interested in that, and this is for non-commercial use only, if you're looking for commercial applications, please talk to us. But you can go in here and download historical information, publish research, just give us credit on that, and we'll be excited about that. So that's a real quick overview of uh, our new Ether Now. Um, it's a whole bunch of updates for Dancun, a bunch of specific things for blobs, as you can see here, new filtering, uh, shareable filters, um, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff that's in there. So please check it out. Let us know what you think. And if you are an entity that you want to know what's going on right now with your ecosystem, whether you're an L2, whether you're an application or protocol or even a wallet, uh, we're interested to build out this concept a whole bunch more. So uh, instead of what's happening with Ethereum, imagine what's happening with your project. And uh, we'd love to talk more about that. So again, Matt Cutler from Block Native, thanks so much for watching and happy uh, observing. Cheers. Bye.